Welcome to the Earth Feels Podcast. I'm Rose. And I'm Christine. Welcome to Earth Feels, the podcast for people feeling overwhelmed by the endlessly gloomy climate news. Where every week we have soul-based conversations about climate change and explore the idea that climate change may be happening for us as much as it is happening to us. If you are ready to shift your focus and secure the future for our kids and our grandkids, then this is the podcast for you. And yes, we do know how to spell. (laughs) Hi, Rose. Hey, Christine. What's our question today? Obviously, the past month, we've seen uh, a huge, well, the, the coronavirus outbreak, which has sickened. I don't know. I don't know how many is now. A week ago, it was over like 75,000 people in China. But it shut down the factories and refineries and flights. And now we're seeing it spread. So I think it would just be interesting to ask the question, what effect is coronavirus having on climate? Is is it a long-term effect? Is it, you know, what's happening with the fact that that the factories are shut down and... um, flights are being diverted and I mean it's and now that it's spread to the states well it, obviously Italy is a big portion um it, it's it's starting to appear everywhere well and if you listened to my best in climate post on Tuesday which was about the coronavirus response shows the world may not be ready for climate induced pandemics that's kind of a good background for this follow-up uh, conversation so uh and it, that also that article was written on february 24th so that was a week ago um, mm-hmm. we're into mm-hmm. march now and so uh the, yeah what what does it say i mean it's shutting down china's economy and having ripple effects but it's also showing as that article pointed out how prepared we are or not for a global pandemics, which there's going to be more infectious diseases happening because of climate change. So it's how, what, what angle are we going to tackle this within the 10 minutes that we have, Rose? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was, the thing that struck me was there was a, um, there was the dramatic fall in China's pollution that was, that they're considering to be partially related to co- coronavirus because in China, they shut down their factories for their Lunar New Year, which always happens around January 25th. So they, there were these maps that NASA, satellite there were satellite images actually, um, that showed nitrogen dioxide values from China. And it showed them from the 1st to the 20th of, of January, which was, was up until their Lunar New Year, before the quarantine. And then it showed a separate map or additional satellite images from from the 10th to the 25th of February. And of course, now we're, we're in March. So they showed them again, the same area during the quarantine. And the reduction in the, the nitrogen dioxide levels from the gas emitted from motor vehicles, from power plants um, and industrial facilities, starting at Wuhan, I think that's how you pronounce it, the source of the outbreak, but then spread across the country, was incredible. I mean, you can, it's, can, it's being seen from outer space. So nitrous oxide, not carbon dioxide? Nitrogen dioxide, NO2. Okay. Is what and they, why? Is what they, What's that? Nitrogen dioxide is the gaseous Air pollutant composed of nitrogen and oxygen is one of the group related called nitrogen ox- oxides. NO2 forms when fossil fuels such as coal, oil, gas, or diesel are burned at high temperatures. Okay. Well, I learned something today. Thank you for that, Rose. <laughs> Me too. Me too. So it's another greenhouse gas, evidently. Um, and we can, and we can, there is um, a beginner's guide to NOx, NO2, and N- and NO as air pollutants. We can put a, a, or a link on our page for people that want more information. And what website but is that? It's called aeroqual.com and meet the nitrogen oxide family. So it's, it's more of a educational. 
Okay. Right. Right. Sounds good. But it was even so going back to the to the um to the maps, to the satellite images, it was it was amazing to me to see how quickly within a few weeks it had dissipated. This this NO2 had dissipated. And um and I think that they were saying two things that when China starts gearing up again, it will spike again because they will try to make up for all that they've lost. Where I, I don't even know if that's a possibility because like in the United States, once you once you lose your sales for a certain amount of time, you don't make those sales up again. So um but they will gear up they will try to gear up the factories and they'll probably have their workers working extended hours to to try to create what they've lost. And, and so in other words, economy. they'll, they'll make up for lost time with emissions. So they emissions will make might up for lost time with emissions. Yeah. Emissions and will said spike. That, emissions right. will spike. They, they will spike. And, and one of the, one of the codicils that NASA said was we need to, you know, be sure that, that climate deniers aren't looking at these satellite maps and saying, Oh, we'll see how quickly it goes away. And so the feeling that we don't need to do anything because once we stop, mm. we can stop. In my mind, it, it posed another question to me. And it was like, there's all these people that say, well, we can't change the paradigm. We can't, there's all this pushback that we can't change the paradigm. And this just shows that, mm, yeah, we can. We just have to have the political will to do it. So we can change, we can change the emissions and, and then somebody would by shutting everything down. So somebody might, who wanted to be a contrarian might say, well, so you're saying we just shut down the global economy then. Is that how we deal with climate change? I'm being a uh, contrarian. Are you being a contrarian? I, I don't think that's how we deal with cl climate change, but, but I think what we can see from it is that when we cut back on production, when we cut back on people having to commute to their jobs, um, when we can cut back on shipping and flying and all that kind of stuff, we can see the effect that it will have. And so if we switch dirty production to clean production, it would be the same thing. It's just, there would still be production, Absolutely. but yeah. So this is what this is where we need to go. We need to be cutting those emissions, hopefully not by pandemics, um, but by not. but by good planning and by using the technology that it, that's out there. We'll point to Project Drawdown uh, again. This is possible mm -hmm. with the technology that we have, and clearly emissions can be cut. And I mean, the other corollary to that is there's so much already in the atmosphere that's going to um, be affecting us depending on the the length of the impact because different emissions have different uh, lengths of time in the atmosphere uh, right so different you know, different greenhouse gases yeah yes, so I mean, everything gases. even if we stop today that's i mean that's what the idea of drawdown is in mm -hmm. my, from in my understanding even if we stop doing everything today we still have enough emissions out there that the CO2 parts per million will go up before it comes back down. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's the draw. That's what drawdown is, is mm -hmm. after it's hit its peak and it starts actually coming back down. Right. So instructive. And I think you are going to talk about aerosols, another episode, which is another sort of perspective on when our emissions drop. It's something mm -hmm. that we don't really think about in terms of global temperature and climate change and global warming. But it turns out aerosols, which we have unwittingly been putting in the atmosphere, are actually, are they both warming and cooling the atmosphere? Yeah. So when I was doing the, doing some research for um, how is how is climate being affected by the coronavirus? Um, I came across an article on aerosols and then there's another rabbit hole to go down. But yes, aerosols are being spewed into the atmosphere all the time. I mean, from volcanoes, from 
uh, sea spray from all kinds of things and aerosols, not thinking about the can of Lysol that you consider it an aerosol, but aerosols as particles that are in the air. And um, some of those, the darker colored ones uh, absorb sunlight and the lighter color ones actually act like little mirrors and reflect. And up until now, it seems like there's been more in the atmosphere. Our scientists are saying we've actually been reflecting more than we've been absorbing, which I'm going to have to do more research because that seems like this uh, is how definitely is that even possible. Definitely coming yeah. attractions. I think you can do a whole episode on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so it's just really interesting because what they're saying is that we've actually the aerosols that are in the air have actually been working to our favor been cooling things down so if we if we draw back too quickly we're going to see another spike so um which just goes to say we really need scientists to be exploring this stuff and it's you know we're unwittingly doing things to mother nature kind of like that person or people who dropped the rabbits in the australian outback thought it was a good idea for whatever reason and now they have no natural predators and they've taken over. So. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. And are we going to quickly mention, because part of this episode is a conversation that I had with Sandra Boatman, who is a friend of mine and an amazing energy therapist, who is doing a five-day challenge starting on Monday, March 9th on it's uh the challenge is called dispel climate anxiety five day challenge it's free it's online and she uh is going to be part of this episode as well where you can hear about what uh she has to offer and rose and i have signed up for yeah, so that you can join us yes yeah, so you could join us um and we'll be you know talking more about what sandra's doing but um i think we're all feeling a little bit of grief right now Right. I think the coronavirus, that's one other, uh, to link it back in for me is everything, everything is slowing down right now. Flights are being canceled. Schools are closing. There's things happening that people are having more, more time to reflect. And, um, when you have more time to think and when you're not so, when you're not so distracted, that's when, um, anxiety can come in. Mm, it can kind of uh, creep up on you. I mean, it's there all the time. You just uh, manage to shove it aside, I guess, until it slows down and then it comes and whacks you over the head, Is that right? Right, right. So, yeah, so it seems like um, it's a perfect, perfect time for her to be doing this five-day challenge. Okay, well. I'm looking forward to seeing yes. it so, or to hearing it, to being part of it. Yeah, and uh, we'll be, you and I, Rose, will be on the Facebook group uh, participating in it. So it'll be, uh, it would be fun to see some of our readers there. And when I say Facebook group, of course, you can always chat on our Earth Feels Facebook group, but there's also going to be one for the challenge. I think Sandra's calling it Earth Keepers Community or something like that. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not signed up for that part of it yet because I'm in Facebook jail. <laughs> So. <laughs> that's another story um but uh, so that's the action tip and the sanity tip again uh this week we're going to put a link to sign up for this free uh five-day online challenge on our show notes and so join us there for both reasons to take action and to have some support during this time and do yeah, you have any uh, good news well good news yeah as of yesterday wells fargo has uh, said that they will no longer support fossil fuel ex exploration in the Arctic. Okay. So it's, a, again, a small baby step forward, but, um, and just in the Arctic, but one more bites the dust. We will celebrate that. I yes, think I might even ha have some more good news. British hedge fund billionaire Hone, who we talked about him oh, last Chris time, Hone. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. launches campaign to starve coal plants of finance and also more good news new zealand's big national retirement fund divests from fossil fuels so there you go there you go it's happening
bit by bit. Keep up the pressure, peeps. Mm -hmm. So, so some good news and uh, yeah, some, some great news and some ways to, to keep sane. So uh, Christine has an interview with Sandra, um, a 10 minute interview with Sandra. So I will sign off and let them chit chat and we will see you um, in, as part of this challenge next week, hopefully. I'll be there. Okay. Bye. I am so excited to introduce Sandra Boatman to our listeners. Sandra is my good friend and amazing energy healer, earth keeper. What else should I say about you, Sandra? You can jump in anytime. Well, hello. Thank you to Christine and to Rose for inviting me onto this podcast. I am Sandra Boatman. I come from the UK and I do energy healing. I have a lot of modalities that I've learned over the last 25 years, um, all pointing me in the same direction of uh, coming, bringing people together in this instance to help our planet um, and empower all of us, uh, both in our personal lives and to make a difference to the planet while she goes through this rather um, negative phase, shall we say, with climate difficult, change. And difficult things. times for Mother Very, Earth. Very difficult times, and for all her inhabitants, you know, trees and flora, fauna, and us observing this and experiencing the changes, whether we experience them physically and actually, or whether we just see them through the media. We may be no people, and we have a fear of the future uh, and how this is going to impact our lives on every single level. It's, you know, the, the earth and us if you like we're, we're completely impacted by this and it feels very very important to do something additional to all the practical things that are being done for me at this time so um, all of my knowledge uh, that I've gleaned over the past from so many wonderful people um, I want to bring together to offer something slightly different and so that was your motivation then you'd say um, you're, you see what's going on with the earth you have this knowledge or tools in your backpack uh, let's just say and you decided to bring them together is that right absolutely um because i know from a personal uh, point of view it's impacting me dreadfully i care deeply about nature um wildlife everything and to see oh so many things going on from the people who don't do anything uh, towards helping it they just seem to ignore it to the people who outrightly deny that anything is going on and then work with all of the power and all the money at their disposal to actively working against uh, what we're trying to do anybody who is taking any action at all they actually deny that there is climate change happening and they work against it and that is soul soul destroying to watch and to be part of it's heartbreaking and i because i have these tools these techniques and um some knowledge that maybe some other people don't have access to because i've spent so many years doing this i just thought it was time to come out of my broom closet and do something uh, rather than just working you know pottering away in the shadows i just thought i'd come out now and um, see what i can do to as a little light to the situation. I love the image of you coming out of your broom closet. Yes, <laughs> the broom in hand, yes. <laughs> Sweep away some of the, uh, the cobwebs that is going on at the moment because I, I feel that, you know, it, it is, I think um, I, I'm running this challenge, which I, I think we're going to discuss later, but mm. I think that part of that, uh, as I work towards creating this, was the realisation that we actually have an emotional carbon footprint and that is just as destructive as climate change and everything else that's going on. And um, that, mm. that to me was a bit of a wake up call to when I went, oh yes. Um, and this is the way that I could um, help in some mm. way, just by um, enlightening people to that fact and giving them tools to work through that. Because I've recognized recently, I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not somebody who knows a lot of facts. Uh, I do what I can in my limited way practically. And I you mean facts, I, I about, facts about climate change. You yeah, know so I'm, I, I'm, not a, I'm not an activist and I, don't, I, I couldn't tell you all the, the stats and everything else about it. I'm just very aware of it and I do my work on a, on a different level. But I do know that 
there is such a thing now which is named as climate change anxiety and it, it's starting to hit home that it's affecting people mentally and emotionally it's, it's actually impacting their lives and there are methods of dealing with it um, in the mainstream but but what I have in mind is, is a little bit more than that and um, I, I want can I just share a quote with you which has inspired this whole challenge sure sure and then and then I'd like you to talk a little bit but more about an emotional carbon footprint because that's kind of a new term to me and probably to most of our listeners okay well this quote is from Gus Speth who is a scientist and he said I used to think the top environmental problems were biodiversity loss ecosystem collapse and climate change I thought that with 30 years of good science we could address those problems but I was wrong the top environmental problems are selfishness greed and apathy and to deal with those we need a spiritual and cultural transformation and we scientists don't know how to do that mm, I don't, yeah that felt, that felt a like one. a gauntlet being thrown down at my feet mm -hmm. in king arthur's days and i picked that up well you have the right down. accent for uh, picking yes. up <laughs> King Arthur's godless. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> so, so it sort of fostered in me an idea that, you know, I, I can't be um, somebody who, I can't afford an electric car. We have no infrastructure over here for that, um, which would make it practicable. I can't, I literally can't afford it. They're too dear. I can't do much, but I can do this. And so it birthed this idea. And this emotional carbon footprint was actually um done on two levels it's what i have been suffering and i realize how disempowering fear anxiety uh stress all this negativity uh, is actually on every single level of our being whether it gives us foggy outlooks um and and we misconceive and misperceive things it has a physical effect on us it has an emotional impact and it actually goes out to in a, something that i call the ripple effect which is a, a known phenomenon into the lives of everyone around us and who knows how far that goes because you know they say a smile is contagious a little bit like the coronavirus i suppose um <laughs> But, you know, well, if you smile at someone, they, they smile inside because someone actually acknowledged them. That goes out there nicer to everyone else. That's a ripple effect. But this negativity that's going on at the moment um, is, is actually a humongous problem for everybody because there seems to be no solution to climate change in the near future and the, the clock is ticking. We've reached a tick, tipping point. But the people who are suffering who care so deeply uh, will not be able to act in out of their best selves to make a difference if they are struggling with climate change anxiety and so often i have to say people don't even know we're so uh, versed in being hyper vigilant we don't even know that we're we're anxious and that we are running on stress loads that are really bad for us and it's time to make a change but i do have one other thing and that is that um, I see the earth as, um, you know, the, because you can actually feel emotions, uh, you can sense an emotion, there is an energy to that. And the earth appears to be mirroring back to us our own anxiety in, in the terms of, of the huge winds and the massive seas and the flooding. We've got flooding over here. We've had the worst February, the wettest February since records began in England, the floods are up to people's rooftops. Their wow. houses, their businesses are ruined. The insurers won't insure them, so they have no insurance. People's businesses have gone. Their, their houses are going to have to be demolished. And there's still more rain coming. We've had four storms on the wow. trot. Um, and, you know, there's no let up. So it is impacting everybody. Mm -hmm. And so when you say the weather is mirroring people's emotions, uh, what about the carbon dioxide and the pollution that we're putting into the atmosphere? Well, this is the emotional carbon footprint. That is our toxic feelings, our negativity is polluting the air. <laughs> it's, you know, we are literally without, re I think without realizing it, polluting our earth as well. But so it's on do a you, different level. So are you saying if we cleaned up our emotions that we would the the weather would stop being so bizarre or no I'm, well, i well i wish that were true it would be lovely <laughs> if <too>. it was <laughs> but no my my main aim on this one is to make people realize that um 
to be to make decisions and to gain clarity and to take actions cannot come from a place of fear and distress and stress and if if we can only recognize our emotions and the ripple effect of those then uh, and regain a sense of balance and peace we can make better choices and i believe that greater minds than maybe we have will also be inspired to find solutions all i know well, is that if, if we do nothing then we are just adding to the problem and i believe we can be part of the solution because we are part of the problem whether we, we you know acknowledge it or not whether i'm not blaming anybody there is no self-judgment this is a tremendously powerful surge of negativity that is affecting every single one on the planet and um so i, I i've called it earth keepers community because i believe the people who care um do want to help the earth and i think on a, on a very different level i think this will help the earth enormously but that's not part of the challenge that that's a little bit deeper level still mm -hmm. but this is purely to put people in the best place and to send out a positive ripple of peace to stop the this flood okay because so your challenge is called my challenge is called dispel climate anxiety okay and we'll have a link in the show notes to for people to sign up it starts on monday march 9th is that right yes and it is free to do it's a five-day challenge um it's it consists of a video every day that um i've already recorded and i will be doing facebook lives each day as well on to, to supplement the video and it, it's just a simple case of watching the video and doing um, some very simple assignments. There will be prizes to be won every day. Um, and that really is just to give people a, a simple to follow five step process over the five days that I do hope they can continue with. And there will be a follow up webinar where I give a little bit more depth and information on, on how to deepen that practice if mm -hmm. they want to okay. and give a bit more information. Well, here at Earth Feels, we love action tips and sanity tips. So it sounds like this is five days of that kind of thing coming from your perspective and wealth of uh, wisdom and knowledge in energy and healing. And so I'm so glad that you had time to pop in and say hello and rose and i have signed up for the challenge oh, and excellent. yes and so we invite all of our listeners out there to join us as well we'll be participating in the facebook page and uh, we look uh, I'm, I'm excited we'll look forward to seeing sandra and all of you in this challenge and um, can i just say one more thing because my intention <laughs> Thank you. One more thing. The, the intention behind this was to link everything we do to healing the earth so that we, we link any positive process to, to help the earth at the same time rather than just us. It is all about empowering us when we feel disempowered and giving us back control when we feel out of control. But it's also um, to, to be sent to the earth as well so that we have this intention of linking our well-being to the well-being of the earth and that's a little bit more than normal workshops do mm -hmm. because they're only working on the person and i think we are linked uh, that's my belief that we are part of the earth and therefore our pain is her pain and she's showing us our pain mm -hmm. Hmm. beautiful well we'll wrap up with that thanks so much sandra we might have you back uh, to talk about this another time but thanks for dropping by Thank you for letting me. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That's this week's episode of Earth Feels. Special thanks to singer-songwriter Kristen Hoffman for generously allowing us to use song for the ocean. Thanks for listening. Don't forget, subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss an episode. Catch you next time. Bye-bye. Children of the earth, I'm calling out. There's a mission for you and for me